So we have probably all heard someone saying, I need to go outside and get some sunlight to get my vitamin D. Well, we're going to kind of learn about some of the science that's behind this. I think some people have the misconception that vitamin D just kind of rains from the sun. It just kind of sends down vitamin D to us. It's not necessarily 100% the case, but we'll learn about what the sun does give us and what we do absorb here and how it does relate to our vitamin D production. So you can see here the sunlight shining down on all these people on the nice beach here. And many of them are getting exposed to the rays and making vitamin D. So what is vitamin D? And it's actually D3 is the specific uh, vitamin. There's foods high in vitamin D, so it's not the old, sunlight is not the only source of this. It is an important nutrient for maintaining a healthy skeleton, and it forms an, an integral part of bone metabolism, calcium and phosphorus homeostasis. The most natural way to get vitamin D is, of course, uh, by exposing your bare skin to sunlight ultraviolet B rays in particular. I stress the point bare skin. If you're just outside and you're all kind of bundled up and covered up with jackets and hats and gloves, you're not really getting the uh, vitamin D production. Uh, 1000 IU, which is international units, is what's considered uh, what, what people need as far as a sufficient vitamin D amount. See, so, so we're going to relate it to the sun. Now uh, remember the sun produces a visible light, but also we're going to be focusing here on the ultraviolet lights. UVC, UVB, and UVA in particular. So starting with our UV rays and exposure, you have to remember UVC is filtered out actually by the atmosphere. So while the sun does produce UVC rays, they're filtered out well above our heads in the stratosphere and into the ozone. UVB rays, kind of in this wavelength here, are considered burning. They enter the surface of the epidermal layer. Again, remember that's our top layer of the skin. UVA are considered aging. Uh, UV wavelengths because they penetrate deep into the dermis and the subcutaneous or hypodermis, um, just above that hypodermis kind of layer there. Remember, these we cannot see. This is our visible light spectrum. Our ultraviolet here is in that less than approximately 400 nanometers, so that 200 ish to 400 ish nanometers in wavelength that we can't see. So, when I mentioned those UV lights, is you may have seen sunglasses and they offer UV protection filters out 100% of all UV, A, B, and C, and harmful blue light up to 400 nanometers. They're polarized. Great marketing. Uh, but to filter out 100% of UVC rays, it may sound great, but there's one kind of major flaw with this. Well, the atmosphere actually filters out the UVC rays, so you're not really exposed to those wavelengths unless you're kind of taking your sunglasses up above the ozone layer. Uh, so. They, are, they may be right that you're filtering out those UVC rays, but you're probably not being exposed to them in the first place. So just kind of watch the marketing on certain things when you understand the science. Uh, you can kind of see through some of the things that they are uh, offering up in their kind of advertisements to you. So skin type does impact um, this ability to process vitamin D. Some people, you know, burn easily. You see our individuals here on the beach. Some are probably, this individual probably will burn very easily. Some people are more likely to tan. And some people have innate protections. So remember that this, you have more than just your skin type. You can also use sunscreen or simply covering your skin can reduce UV light exposure. Here in Saudi Arabia, there's a lot of um, sun. There's not a lot of shade. Simply covering yourself can help reduce your exposure. And we're looking at the UVA rays relating to tanning, and here's our visible light, and then our UV being related to vitamin D. So how does this skin type, what's, what's the point of going over this? <clears throat> well, this kind of table below shows different types of skin types. They're just labeled skin type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And here's their skin colors, a little description, and some characteristics. You're probably most familiar with the characteristics. If you know someone that always burns, never tans, they're kind of that skin type 1. They're very fair. Red or blonde hair, blue eyes, freckles. You get into kind of type 3 here. Sometimes a mild burn, gradually tans, fair, any eye or hair color, very common skin type. And all the way here, 6, black hair, dark brown eyes, may never burn, tans very easily. It's important to understand your skin type because you're going to see how that relates to your amount of light exposure. So you may have heard, oh, I need 10 minutes of sunlight and you know, I get my vitamin D. Well, that's not always the case. It's kind of, how much sun do I need then if it's not 10 minutes? Well, specific recommendations to reach that 1,000 um, international units of vitamin D are not that easy to figure out. 
Skin types are different depending on the day of year, place, and time of day. The recommendations all vary. So we use two examples here. Both at noon, one year in Miami and one year in Boston. So starting with Miami, bright sunny Miami, if you have skin type 3, you'll probably need about 6 minutes of exposure to sun in summer and 15 minutes in the winter. Remember in the winter in the northern hemisphere, that kind of angle of the sun is going to be a little less in the winter, less intense. That's why you need a greater amount of time. However, if you're skin type 5, still in Miami at noon, you're probably going to need about 15 minutes in the summer and 30 minutes in the winter. It's right, so a little different there for skin type 5. And just remember, skin type 5 again, is that darker brown color versus fair skin color for that skin type 3. If you're in Boston now at noon, someone with skin type 3 will probably need about an hour of exposure to the sun in the summer. And someone in the summer with skin type 5 will probably need about two hours of exposure in the summer. If you're wondering where I got these numbers from, the um, link is located here at the bottom. Now during winter, which is interesting about Boston, after the winter months, it's really not possible for anyone to make vitamin D in the sun, no matter the skin type. The sun angle is very um, reduced. Also might be, typically Boston's very cold, it might be covered up. Very hard to get any vitamin D from the sun. This is why it's important also to consume vitamin D in the diet. But this hopefully gives you a little bit of the idea of it's not just as easy as, oh, I need 10 minutes of sun. Depends on your skin type, depends on your location, it also depends on the season. So hopefully this gets you a greater understanding for bodies and you're able to manufacture and make vitamin D from the sun and realize it's not as easy as that simple eh, 10 minutes and I'm good.